Get a shot of this guy right here. Don't move. Don't move. Don't move. Which guy? Don't move. Right here. Right, right in the front. He knows. Don't move. No, no. He just said he was doing this. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, a little skeptical. <laughs> I've heard of this love line, but I'm not convinced it's a good show. All right. You all right? You good? Okay. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to be here either. I got news for you. Here's the key to show business. We both pretend like we want to be here. We get the out of here earlier. That's, that's what show business is. Hey, look at him. He's clapping now. There you go. That's right. Shoot. Once in a while, do this, too. They really think you want to be here. Yeah. All right. All right. So now that we're all uh, know what the rules are for the game, Drew, you know, you got to pretend like you want to be here, right? That's beautiful. Welcome to Love Line. I'm Adam Cross, Dr. Drew, Dr. Drew, board certified physician, addiction medicine specialist. That's uh, Catherine McCord. She's got a. I don't know why. I'm the getting twist like award. A, like, yeah, I was going to say, like, she ripped the curtain off of the laughing <laughs> set and made pants out of it or something. Yeah. You know what that's reminding me of? Uh, I'm going to try to uh, connect the dots uh, later after the show. That's going to be a good time. And, uh, oh, one of my favorite guys, and uh, I don't know when the love affair started, but it, it's just never going to end. Uh, John Popper is here tonight. <laughs> Deanna is uh, 20 and on the phone. Deanna? Yeah. Hey. Hi. My question is, is that for the last six months, every time me and my boyfriend have sex, I end up throwing up afterwards. Mm -hmm. And it didn't start, it didn't go every single time, but now it's every time. And I don't know, my doctor didn't know what it was for. He doesn't know what happened or why it's happening. And I just kind of wanted to know if there was any way you guys knew. Is there anything else you need to tell us? Do you have any medical problems? No. Water bed? No. Oh, you want to get, you get the patch. <laughs> you put the patch on? Yeah, thanks then. Okay, you can do that. Uh, any uh, medication you're taking? Hi, I'm, on, I'm just on birth control. Any medication. medical problems? Uh -uh. You're, you're Could you be pregnant? Could no, you be I'm, pregnant? I'm on, I've been on birth control ever since my daughter was born. But so. mistakes happen. Huh? Mistakes happen. It, yeah. it's, it's still funny that it'll be just associated with a sexual encounter. What about a smell? Like, a, is there a smell that makes you not? No, it's just, it, a, it does feel like morning sickness. I mean, it might not be right afterwards if I just lay down and go to sleep. And then when I wake up in the morning, then I throw up. Oh, but, so it's not really about the sex, it's about waking up in the morning and getting sick. I don't know. <laughs> the way you told the story was though it was immediately after a, a sexual encounter, but no, it's the next morning? Oh, or it could be right, I mean, it could be right, it's just, Why? if I get up and move around, could then it, I'll start Could it be sick. on a day that you don't have sex? No. But Catherine, is, is there a day when you don't have sex? That's yeah. Catherine, Wait a minute, how long, <laughs> Deanna, how long has this been going on? It's been about the last six months. Oh, yeah, that's not so morning sickness. Not pregnant. Yeah. Um, and you're not bulimic. Uh-uh. You have no history of vomiting or having reflux or... No. Any of these problems, heartburn. Does the guy have a lot of hair on his back? No. That, that happened to me. There's got to be yeah. something. If it's six months and it, it, it happens this often, there's got to be something that triggers that, like, gurgling stomach or a smell uh, it, it's, or... It's bizarre, though. It's the next, the next day. I mean, eight hours later. Yeah. That doesn't seem to make any sense. I don't sense. think it has anything to do with the sex. Is there Maybe something not. psychological where you ever raped or abused or no. anyone vomit on you or <laughs> nothing? No. No. I, I, you need to see a gastroenterologist. Somebody needs to do an endoscopy. I mean, there's a lot of stuff work needs to be done here to figure out what, why this is happening, okay? Okay. Yeah, I, I'm not sure that... I wouldn't connect it to the sex. Yeah. I don't because if it's the next morning, 
That's not connected to the sex. Mm -mm. Right? I, <laughs> I hope not, but... But that you, you put a correlation there, so that's why... Yeah, why, why would you think it would be connected if it was the next morning? I don't know. I just... That's just what happens. It's every time. I mean, every morning after I have sex, the next morning I throw up. So I just figured... It might be that, you know. You have chronic nausea with vomiting. That's what we're talking about here, okay. right? Okay. And this is kind of a complex problem. I mean, it, it could be neurologically based. It could be endocrinologically based. It could be... Do you, you drink a lot of alcohol? No, I don't drink. It could be gastroenterologically based. But a thorough... It's going to take a, you know extensive workup to figure this out, okay? Mm -hmm. oh, Get to it. I hate throwing up. Uh, you imagine doing that all the time? Worse. Yeah. That's how I no, thought it was No, no. I mean, uh, uh, how many... I mean, you're throwing up because you drunk, drank too much on how many occasions? Every that? weekend. Every <laughs> weekend? <laughs> yeah. Good. I, I learned my lesson when I was 16 and a Dang. half with the uh, throwing up at the alcohol, oh. and uh, I only did it like 35 times <laughs> since then. So I learned a valuable lesson when I was 16 and a half, which was never again except for about 35 more times until I'm in my mid-30s. You must learn. All right. Yeah, yeah, I'm, not a real, I'm not a quick study. That's why I didn't do well in high school. Chris. Chris? Yes. What's up? Well, uh, since I was about 13 years old, every time I see uh, nudity on TV or I talk to my girlfriend or kiss my girlfriend, I get some kind of fluid that comes out of my penis. And it's real embarrassing, real sticky now and then. I just want to know if there's some way that I can get rid of it or fix it or so he's wrong with me. He's, he's got that bad gasket bad gasket down there yeah and some guys do this Chris I mean some guys will have quite a, quite a volume come out it, it's the pre ejaculate it's actually it's actually high in sperm sometimes and, and calcium basically. and vitamin B12 <laughs> and all the essential nutrients that a growing boy yeah that a growing girl needs it's part of my pitch you know you ladies need twice as much iron and here's your source that's a okay but be that as it may it's a normal thing and it's for some guys it can be quite embarrassing it's and any sexual stimulation can cause that to occur so it's it's normal but there really isn't anything i'm aware of that can be done for this okay okay guys another question yeah, yeah. uh sometimes me and my girlfriend would you know fool around before sex and it will accumulate so much down there that when we start having sex, now I can only last like five, ten minutes. And that has nothing to do with the accumulation. The interesting theory, though. No, yeah, <laughs> that's just you. No, this is this is a uh, a overzealous penis. Yes. This penis gets going. I think we talk about it, like a dog. Dog hears the can or opener, is it, or is drooling. Is it the penis with the sperm trying to come out. Yeah, the sperm. Yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, you may be right. The sperm's going. Come on, boys. Let's go. I'm going for daylight. <laughs> what about the underwear? No underwear can stop us. <laughs> we don't need no stinking underwear. <laughs> See, my sperm's different. Mine's like, I got one guy going, come on, then. you go ahead. We're going to stay here in the balls where it's safe. We're very comfortable. <sighs> He's going to release you guys soon enough. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're, we'll be we'll be out in a minute or so. <laughs> Go out and scout around. See if you find anything. We'll be back. Don't oh, worry. Let's uh, bring John out, shall we? Right, John. Speaking you know, no more hypotheticals involving <laughs> talking sperm, Drew. If you if you wish, I, I, like that's my boy. Like he loves the, <laughs> he loves the sperm humor. Get a shot of him. Come on, get get back in your pose. Come on, don't sit up. Get in the. <laughs> It's time that sperm again. I thought this was the price is right. I walked in the door, I got some jack off talking about sperm. All right. Here's a, 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 I'll tell you, if I were gay or gayer, I'd be into this guy. I, I really would. If you, you didn't, if you didn't have Jimmy. Oh, Jimmy, that's right. Or One Ken. between two lovers. Yeah, that's right. But you, you know I love this man, I know. right? Yeah. From uh, Blues Traveler, John Popper. I just, I'm so blown away by that, He's that so admission. He's so emotional. I love this guy. He, he came for me. He came out for me. 
<laughs> great, great, great musician. Oh dear. Great musician. Great singer. Well, thank you, sir. All right, let's talk about the. Uh, I was going to say overzealous yeah. penis. That's kind of a redundant statement, isn't it? Well, you know, it's like a double yeah. negative. Yeah. yeah. All right. You may be. You may be right. All right. Let's talk about Zygo. First solo project. Uh, I was born in a small log cabin that my father built. No, I don't know. It's a record. I made. I'm just sick of talking about it. I, I made All a. Right. Well, I made a record, and it was. It's my first solo record, and uh, I call it Zygo because it was my baby. Huh. All right. Uh, Thank you. Gwen? Gwen is on the phone. Gwen's back up again. Gwen. <laughs> Gwen? Oh, my God. Gwen. <laughs> Hold on a second. Gwen? Hello? Hi, Gwen. Hey. Hi, Gwen. Hi. Um, whenever my boyfriend has his hands down my pants, stimulating me, um, I get this feeling that I have to pee. And so I push his hands away and run to the bathroom, and I come back, and the mood is totally broken. I just go all over his hand. <laughs> How romantic. Well, just let it fly, you know, just be. <laughs> Live, love. You know, you're going to need a towel later anyway. Yeah, it is. That's true. There, there, there is a... I guess, yeah. Eventually, you do have to go over the towel at some point in the lovemaking, so yeah. why not mop everything up? I'm, exactly. I'm with John. Gwen? Hello? Yeah, what about during that... Oh. What about, is you, are you running out of battery power? No, it just beeps like that all the time. <laughs> how, uh, how low is your self-esteem that you're not breaking down and getting another phone? It's a bad sign. It beeps like that <laughs> all the time? Gwen, does that not annoy you? Gwen, there's a, there's a thing that uh, you can go get, it's called a recharger. I do, I charge it all the time. A new phone. Is that the only phone in the house? Yeah. Oh. Oh, it, a long call. it might be call waiting. Your friends are calling to see, tell you that you're on love line. <laughs> hey, it's, it's fast and furious Give her a now. quick answer at this point. <laughs> okay, do, do you urinate, do you feel like you want to urinate during intercourse? Um, we haven't had sex. Have, right. you, have you ever had sex? No. Do you masturbate? No. Have you ever had an orgasm? Um, I have before, or at least I thought I did, but... Did you urinate then? No. Okay. I'm going to have an epileptic seizure <laughs> if uh, this thing goes off uh, one more time. I'm going to hold it out. Uh, well, the deal is this That's is a... a quick note for the producers, by the way. <laughs> Adam, have a phone that works. Adam, let's not put it much. You wanted it real. Yeah. All right, all right, you're right, you're right. I'll go back on that. Now. Yeah, but that's, right. that's just got to be a reaction, I think, that she's not used to... Well, it's very common for some women with sexual stimulation to feel an urge to urinate, and many are afraid that they're going to get the urge or going to lose their urine, and some do. Right. And it's nothing to really be worried about. You just talk to your partner about it, and as John says, uh, just be. Yeah. Or just and pee. pee before you're going you're to get to this moment. Girls always say that they're, you know, they just want to pee, pee first. Maybe she yeah, really right. Absolutely. likes to pee on her partner. <laughs> John going the, the extra yard with that one. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know. A little fixation thing. Yeah. Uh, you know, sex should be about not caring if you have to go. I mean, if you're really having fun, you get lost in the moment and, you know. You end up urine all over yourself. Yeah. Did you, did you ever, anybody here ever fart when they were having sex? <laughs> oh, this man does too. Yeah. Uh, I, that for I me is a test. For me, that's a test. Alright, there you go. I'm sure they, I'm sure they smelled lovely. John, you farted uh, during the love Well, my test is. If you notice, you must not be doing it right. You mean, you mean if someone calls... So he goes, what was that? Then, yeah, you know, not you must not be the distracting moment. them properly. Yeah. But a petite man like yourself, I'm sure but you oh, don't yeah. produce <laughs> much power when... Uh, when, when no, she just went. thinks that I'm sort of bellowing. It's kind of a, a manly bellow, so, you know. A manly bellow. Ass bellow. Yeah. All right, uh, <laughs> Jessica. Sort of a trumpeting kind of... <laughs> Jessica? A trombone. Yes. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Um, I have a question. Um, I've always been obsessed with serial killers. And um, lately, I, when I read about the murder scenes, I get kind of turned on. And, um, okay. and like, it's gotten to the point where um, I have my boyfriend choke me during intercourse. And I was wondering, you know, if, I mean, do I need help or something? Wow, that voice. I'd say yes. 
<laughs> but I, I, I know, you're just taking a stab at it. Uh, Jessica, we'll take a little break, and then we'll get back and figure out who's the road you. MTV presents Choose or Lose 2000 year-long election coverage. The campaign, the candidates, your issues. It all kicks off with Choose or Lose Launch 2000 from New Hampshire, featuring an inspiring performance by Q-Tip and more. Wednesday night at 9.30. Followed by Choose or Lose, Where Were You at 22? A refreshing look at the candidates' younger pre-political selves at 10 p.m. 9 central. Choose or Lose 2000. Be heard. Not one of these single-ingredient pain relievers is approved to fight migraine pain. In fact, only Excedrin migraine has a formula approved by the FDA for fighting migraine pain. Only Excedrin migraine attacks migraine pain with two proven pain relievers, plus an enhancing ingredient to make its pain relievers work even better. Excedrin migraine is the only approved formula for migraine pain. You already know the best actors, the best comedians, the best stunt people, and the best costume designers. Hey, maybe you should be a director. Desktop Movies, now premiering on an iMac near you. Hey, neighbor. Can I borrow some ice? Yeah, sure. Hold this. Yep. Thanks. Got any sugar? Toothbrush? Hair dryer? Hey! With more barbecue and cheddar flavor you can see, more you can taste on every chip and every bite. New Ruffles Flavor Rush Potato Chips keep you coming back for more. You heard their hot new single, Bring It All To Me. You caught them on tour with NSYNC. The hip-hop soul sensation, Black. Black, their self-titled debut album in stores now. Hey, Christy! Smoking makes you look cool? No way! What? I like the taste of bananas, and I also like BigWords.com. But I'm not selling bananas today. I'm selling BigWords.com. If I was selling bananas, then I wouldn't be able to tell you about ordering all your textbooks on the internet, or saving a lot of money, or getting free delivery. No, I'd be telling you about bananas! I'd be telling you about bananas! I'm not selling bananas, okay? That's the difference. I'm not selling bananas. I broke them. I broke it. You made me break my banana. You made me break my banana. It's a fact. A Whopper has 40 grams of fat. But Subway has seven delicious sandwiches with six grams of fat or less. To burn off those extra grams of fat, you'd have to do 1,785 jumping jacks. Subway. It's the way a sandwich should be. You gotta work for the rest of your life. There's only two words to say to a boring career offer. Bye bye. Thousand new and used video games, all at the lowest price.
Fancy American football. Where's my TRL Super Bowl party? Where's my Christine Aguilera? TRL moves from Times Square to Atlanta for the tailgate party of the year with TRL Super Bowl 34, hosted by Carson Daly and James Vanderbeek, featuring special guest in sync. All kicking it with the NFL players in honor of the big game next Saturday at 1. Oh, I'm a genie in a bottle, baby. It's got to rub me the right way. John Popper. I go to the name of the solo project. Uh, don't worry, he'll be back with the uh, Blues Traveler soon. Yes, uh, we actually just got a new bass player. Our guitar player's little brother Ted is going to be playing bass for us now. Cool. So, good. So uh, that that continues. <laughs> Jessica's. Uh, oh boy, Jessica's 16. Uh, is obsessed with uh, murder and uh, and um, killing and uh, her boyfriend strangles her when uh, they have sex, and where do you think this comes from, Jessica? Um, I have no idea. Jessica, it sounds like you have so much trauma in your voice. You sound, like, depressed. Um, I mean, which I would sound like it makes sense. You sound like you're scared of these feelings, and that's, that to me right there is, uh, you know, you well, should get help. Well, yeah, I am. Um, like, I have a lot of nightmares, like, when I do read books, but, like, that, those are the only books that interest me, and I don't know where I got it from. Why were you, you were never terrorized? I, I've been molested, and people try to rape me, but I never... No, that's, that's a that form counts. of terror, yeah. yeah. Jessica, you're so passive about saying that. Someone raped you, and you were molested. Do you understand what that can that's do a to a, a, a sick, I mean, when you're growing up, that can change your life. That changed your life. That's not just something that everybody deals with, and oh, it's not that bad, you know, at least they didn't kill me, you know. That's big, right there all on its own. When did that happen? This started, like, when I was 12. I started reading about them. No, no, no. How old were you when you were sexually abused? Um, I was 5, okay. uh, 10, and 13. Yeah, who was it that did it when you were 5? 5, my babysitter's daughter. Oh, wow. No. Wait, was she a child also? No, she was 16. Mm -hmm. And then when, who, when you were 10? Um, my best friend's older brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what, what, was your dad around? No, did they're they, divorced, but he's in my life, so... Did anybody physically manhandle you as well? Were you physically abused? No. Just, no. just the sexual abuse? Yes. There wasn't any violence in your home? No, no. Aggression? Depression? Aggression. Aggression? No. Um, I saw my, my stepdad hit my mom once, but that was like only once. Okay. okay but, All right. Well, but that's, that's I, be that as it may. A lot of stuff going on. It's got plenty, yeah. plenty to fuel the fire. A lot of stuff going on in the home, yeah. Yeah, so she has a sort of morbid obsession. She likes the uh, rough trade uh, in the sack. And but she was tortured, so it like totally makes sense. <coughs> Again, it's yeah. That, it's that it gets galvanized. Something right. happens to kids when they're five. When they hit puberty, oh, God. it turns into a sexual orientation. It's just galvanized. They have to act it out compulsively to try to solve that trauma. All right, so Amazing. she has to get some therapy, some help, some group, whatever. Yeah, at least just think about let's getting... focus on the rape and the well, abuse. Let's and focus not... on how miserable she is and depressed. Let's deal with that. Let's, you right. can feel Boy. better now. Get some treatment. And then hopefully in the process of that, all these other issues can be dealt with. I've got well. a question for you, Dr. Drew. Yeah. Uh, does... Is she always going to have, maybe not as morbid, if she gets therapy and gets help, is she always going to have some kind of a fascination with it sexually? She's going to have something, yeah, something. I don't know what it will be, but unless, I mean, I suppose these things can be completely worked out, but they rarely are. Right. Yeah. So. All right. From that, we'll go to the Via TV phone. Which uh, is with uh, John, who's in the, uh, at the University of Alaska. Yeah. They got a college there? What the hell was that? I don't know. John? <laughs> yeah. What, what, what are you doing? What's going on? All right, this question in, uh, involves my roommate, and uh, his behavior is starting to weird me out as of uh, recently. He's been, um, he's pretty much getting into some heavy voyeurism with me uh, and women I bring home and whatnot. Uh, he's always listening outside my door, and it got to a point where he tried busting in and uh, just to see what he could see, say, you know, like he had asked me a question or something. So I put a lock on my door, and that kind of stopped that. But then he, put, he tried putting a baby monitor under my bed, 
Uh, this happened several times, and in like my trash can, to, you know, see what he could hear. Is and he then real? Is he is he a figment of your imagination? No, no, he, he really lives there. <laughs> I just saw wow. Fight Club. And, you know, yeah. uh, no, no, unfortunately. You know, it's pretty. There's not a lot going on in Alaska. I mean, I. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, but the, the craziest part is most recently he was underneath my bed, and I came oh. home and. In Alaska, you know, they grow their the corn. <laughs> is it interesting? Most of the roommate calls we get are complaints about the roommates engaging in sexual activity. Right, right. Not intrusive uh, roommate. Is he right. obsessed with you? I mean, do you no, think he's, uh, is it well, I mean, you or is it bed? your your mate? Is there is do you have uh, one particular uh, Eskimo chick you bring home? What do you bring home? What do they have over Grizzly there? Bears. Grizzly bears. Grizzly bears. I've got a cure. I've got a ready-made cure. What's your friend's? Well, you don't have to. Let's say his name is Dan. While you're having sex, you and your girlfriend promise that no matter what you do, talk about how inadequate sexually Dan is and how small his penis is. Okay. And just scream it really loud the more excited you get. And Dan will just not want to listen. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Oh, Dan! Stop so much! Stop, stop, stop. Hey, John, don't you guys have like a resident advisor or something like that? No, no, we have a, we have a condo. A condo? Well, you, you, you're the, just the two of you? No, there's a, a total of four guys. Why don't you guys Why don't get you a community the other yeah. couple of guys? Get a community meeting going here and set some rules and uh, cut them out of the lease if he doesn't behave like a community member, right? Okay. All right. Okay. Probably hey, there on uh, that's so weird. Okay, a moose hunting scholarship or something. <laughs> what the? How much do your parents have to hate you to send uh, you to school in Alaska? Alaska's well, beautiful. I know, but it's like. It's, it's so a, far away. No, no, no. These, are, these are Alaska gray. citizens, and this is their school. It's How do you really know? Cool maybe this guy. Maybe Alaska's this amazing. Have there. you ever been to Alaska? They got glaciers like giant mountains it's of so frozen cool. windex. Seals and whales. It's great so salmon cool. fishing. Oh, yeah. What do you guys work for the tourist board or something? <laughs> then the other thing, you know, Alaska is very easy to get to with our affordable rates. <laughs> <laughs> An Alaskan Airlines, the only way to yes. travel. <laughs> Alaska means I love you. Uh, Styles, what's going on? <laughs> Hello. Hello. Yeah, my question is about bad breath. Okay. Have you heard about these new breath mints? They're made in Alaska. Um, I've been dating this girl now for a while, but it's recently, within the last month, that her breath has become pretty bad, actually. And um, I felt bad because I didn't want to bring it to her attention, but I just couldn't take it anymore. And when I did, she got really embarrassed. But she also then said, well, then just tell me you know, when it happens, and so she's been brushing more often, popping mints and stuff like that, but to be honest, it really hasn't helped that much. Is she, does she have any medical problems? Well, see, that's my question. My question is, uh, I don't know if this is medical or not, and maybe you, you know, you could have an answer for me on that one. Right. Well, if, if she has diabetes or she has gastroesophageal reflux, I mean, there are things of the stomach, that disorders, where food doesn't move out of the stomach properly or moves in the wrong direction that can cause bad breath, but most bad breath is caused by bacterial growth in the back of the tongue. But what about the inconsistency? Well, maybe what did he eating. say it was in... It, no, no, I said that it, it's just been consistently recent within the last month. The last so, you're, so you're saying it's getting worse? Well, it got... It, no, no, it wasn't there at all until, until just this month. Right. Well, that's what I'm saying. What is that? Diabetes could do that. I mean, I became diabetic, you know, and it's just you reach a certain level and suddenly it starts... Your sugar levels start just kicking in overdrive. There's there's two versions of diet, kidney failure and other things too. I mean, she ought, she needs a medical evaluation for sure. Uh, the the diabetes can cause from the the elevated levels of the blood sugar gives a funny smell, oh. and also what's called diabetic gastroparesis, where the stomach doesn't move properly from right. nerve has injury. She, has she had any yeah, other that? problems? I don't know. I think so. Yeah. <laughs> well, I. No, I'm, I'm kind of, you know, at, at a loss at what it could be only because... All right, but just know that, that you know, bad breath doesn't occur until it occurs. And once it does, it's often this fixed bacterial growth <laughs> in the back of the tongue. You need to start, she needs to do two things. She needs to see a doctor, get, get lab work and the usual sort of workup. And then secondly, she needs to see a dentist who does the work of cleaning the back mm. of the tongue and helps you get over the And thing. they have the Funko meter that yep. can actually <laughs> measure the funkitude of the breath. <laughs> yes. Adam, is it? I didn't know you knew that, that, that you know, a lot of reading. No, and remember the first rule of breath medicine, George Kennedy is not really a doctor. <laughs> That's right. Despite what uh, I think. We're going to the shower next. Easy Bake Oven. That is uh, over in the Easy Bake Oven. Do you like all these graphics? Yeah. <laughs> these gothic little art things in between are pretty cool. Lizette? Oh, hey. Hey. Um, I had a question. Um, I went to a party a couple months ago, and... 
Um, some guys offered me two new drugs, and they were Special K and GHB. Nice. And I wanted to know what, like, I pass, end up passing out, but, like, I don't know what it'll do to me, like, long term. I was right. wondering. Hold on. Now All I right. feel old. <laughs> yeah. This drug hasn't even okay. heard of. Oh I'll yeah, it. yeah. Through will uh, get you all filled in on the uh, special K and the GHB after the break. So, uh, right there. do for the touchable beauty of finesse hair. Do you want regular or super? Finesse. A girl could get used to this. Big sale. <laughs> I wasted way too much time being fat. I would go up and down and up and down. Look at me. I lost over 50 pounds on this one fast plan, and I kept it off for over three years. I didn't know I looked like this underneath. It's not only about being thin, it's about feeling good and having energy. I exercise, I eat right. I have a shake for lunch every day. It helps me stay this way. If you know your ABCs, you know the vitamins in Slim Fast. It's a fun way of rejuvenating your body. Slim Fast, every day. Get healthy. It can happen to you. Why do echoes carry so well? Because they're designed from the inside out. Not one of these single ingredient pain relievers is approved to fight migraine pain. In fact, only Excedrin migraine has a formula approved by the FDA for fighting migraine pain. Only Excedrin migraine attacks migraine pain with two proven pain relievers, plus an enhancing ingredient to make its pain relievers work even better. Excedrin migraine is the only approved formula for migraine pain. Unique. You're beautiful, Heist. An expert, unfortunate. 
Miss Harris is in a lot of trouble. I'm someone that's trying to help. I taught her to survive. What other little tricks did you teach her? Survival of the fittest. Kill or be killed. From Destination Films, Ewan McGregor, Ashley Judd, Eye of the Beholder, Rated R, starts Friday, January 28th. That's so gay. Hello? You faggot! So you're a queer, aren't you? Bad queer faggot! The next time you use words like these, think about what they really mean. Take a stand against violence. Call 1-877-284-1188 for a free enhanced CD featuring music and insight from today's top performers, as well as an action guide with facts and ways you can take a stand. Hi, I'm Carney Wilson. You're watching Loveline on MTV. Hey, the enemy question. So 24 hours a day. 323-520-L-O-V-E. Long distance charges may apply. <laughs> Hi, we're back for Love Line. John Popper is our guest. Zygote is the name of that uh, solo project. Please buy uh, it, by the way. Yeah, you really should yeah. buy it. I'm not plugging my record properly, but you know, after a while, you just don't give a crap anymore. <laughs> well, we'll care buy for it, you. Please. And I asked John if he'd play the harmonica later, and he said he would. So they're going out to the bus together. And there's some right. bet you had about. Huh. Well, all the guys were like, "Get him to play the harmonica, get him," and they didn't believe that I would ask you. And I asked you, and you oh, said, "Yes, yeah. absolutely." That's yeah, cool. Yeah. Let's go back to Lizette. Now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Lizette. So, Lizette, uh, you took GHB, right? Yes. And Kevin, was this at a rave or something? No, just a party. Bar mitzvah. <laughs> uh, all right, well, let me, I'm just going to sort of lay out what these things are for you. Ketamine, a special case, is a drug called ketamine. Okay. And it's uh, a dissociative anesthetic. Um, we don't really understand the long term complications of that drug. Probably not going to do anything to you from a single exposure. It is an anesthetic, it has all the sort of so you feel like numb when you take well, it? Well, yeah, it, it's associative, so you get kind of out of body. Uh, get, what, what was it made for? Uh, for anesthesia, they use it for, and veterinarians use it, and they use it for sort of young adolescents for surgeries. It sort of puts people in another place. They don't really and, touch with reality. And do you... Um, a little euphoria with it. Do you, do you like, yeah. trip out on it? or you No, no, it's something? not hallucinogenic, no. I, 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 you know, when I had my hand surgery recently, I got... I don't know what it was, but I got that put in another place right. thing. But, oh, really? You know, the, the, the bitch was is I landed in an operating room right next to where ours was, and this guy was getting some major yeah. surgery, and I was, <laughs> I was, I was hip replaced. I thought I wanted to get back now. I was getting a hip replaced, and they gave me something to keep me awake, but when I, got, when I wake up to, and the doctor's like, get in there, get in there. And I'm like, I can feel that vibrating through my bones. Oh, like, no got is, a little yeah. chisel in there. Oh. I was like, I, I can hear that. And they're like, oh, no, you're going to just give me a little more. Like, hey. <laughs> and the GHB is gamma hydroxybutyrate, which is a precursor of a chemical in the brain called GABA, which is the chemical that down regulates talk the brain. A lot. No, I, you're implying that I have a lot of GABA. <laughs> you got all your full of GABA. So, uh, uh, and it, it, the problem with GHB is that it's very hard to dose. There's a very small, narrow difference between a dose that will make you sort of intoxicated like a six pack of beer versus coma, seizure, and death. So it makes and you feel drunk? It makes you feel intoxicated, kind of like, kind of like drinking, yeah. But, but it's a very dangerous drug because you can very easily spill over into too much, which is what happened to you, and you're unconscious, you could have died. It, it's a very difficult drug to uh, sort of use. And I've seen GHB addiction now. There's enough of it around now that it actually you are, we are seeing addiction. And it is a lot worse than alcohol in terms of what it does to your, your, your system. People are very disorganized, they're very depressed. It's, it's almost like being addicted to ecstasy in a way. Oh, I hate ex, ex is the stupidest drug. Any, anything where it's synthetic happiness? In terms of long term, again, yeah. uh, those efforts, two, those single dose, those two, I doubt they're going to be long term. Thank, you. Thank, Thank you. you. I'm, the, I'm the new father of the anti drug movement. <laughs> Mark, what's going on? What's up? Uh, my question is about two years ago, uh, hair started growing on the base of my penis, and eventually it got up to about halfway up. Um, so I went and actually shaved it, uh, and it turned into, I shaved it a few times, God. and it started God. to grow back a little bit thicker. So I was wondering, um, you know, is there some type of procedure that'll just remove it permanently? What right. did you shave with? Uh, you know, like your average bed go. Ah. You got so it Very grew carefully. up like a, like a turtleneck sweater, grew Marble up the side of the penis. And here's the real tragedy in that. 
the penis begins where the hair ends. So hey, if yeah. you got yeah. three and a half inches where the hair growing up the base, you don't start measuring exactly. until you get to that point. So yes. Watch out, Catherine's gonna throw up. I'm just like I'm thinking of the turtleneck. <laughs> well, it's good for the winter. I mean, it keeps you warm, I suppose. This is not unheard of. But the and thought of shaving. Yeah, yeah no, shaving but, over such a sensitive area, you are like a real, yeah. you know, I mean, why do you care that much? Well, it, it can be... It was irritating my partner. I'm, yeah, guys can get pretty disturbed about this. And it, it's okay to, you know, to, to take control. The interesting question is, and I don't know the answer to this, is whether any of the new laser kinds of procedures would help this. You want to shoot would, a laser at someone's well, penis? Well, I don't I don't know. I personally don't want to. But I, I'm wondering if it's possible for hair to be removed that way. Actually, I think it would. I, th I don't see why it would be a problem. You know, when I was a different kid, we used a bullwhip. That's the way to get hair off a penis. That's right. <laughs> Takes a steady hand, but you know. The right man can control it. Hurts so good. <laughs> see, I'm going to actually put a cigarette in the end of the penis first. Just no, that's for of... ticks. Oh, it's ticks. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I meant on the pole. Oh, okay. <laughs> to, to knock the cigarette out of the penis. Oh, right. I see. Right. Okay. Oh, <clears throat> but Mark, uh, it's not something to be ashamed of, and I, I don't know of any hair removal techniques, but there might be some. You might consult with I think it's an erection. It's like a dog. <laughs> well, actually, you know, you're right. That's probably more, less well, painful than waxing. Character. Like, yeah. imagine waxing your penis. That's got to hurt me. Oh, yeah. my God. What? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, like, uh. Bobbitt could never do it because the sutures would never be that strong again. Well, that's interesting. Uh. <laughs> cool. All right, all right. All right, all right let's go to the shower again. So you didn't help him at all, right? No, I, he just wants to know if he can be done, right? I can be done, yeah. Danny? Yeah, what's up? Hey. What up? How's it going? Why are Good. people living in the shower? <laughs> because uh, they don't want to be seen. Uh, Danny. Yes. Go. Um, basically, a week ago, um, four uh, male friends and I and a female friend uh, were at an after party. And um, basically, we played a friendly game of uh, Dare and Double Dare. And we uh, were um, consuming alcohol. But um, I uh, double dared one of my friends to give me a lap dance, male friend. And he did. And. Um, he was in his uh, shorts and he got, uh, I was on the couch and basically he rubbed his uh, penis area up in my face and I got aroused by it. Um, later on that night, someone dared him to give me a hickey on my chest, um, which he did. And uh, basically later on that night when everybody was asleep, uh, he kissed me. And um, his mom walked out to turn off the alarm clock and uh, basically uh, he went again to try to kiss me. But then he looked at me and said, um, sorry, I thought you were somebody else. Um, my question is, is he gay, um, straight, bisexual. And, and what's um, an appropriate tip? <laughs> if I should tell him. <laughs> and um, I, when I masturbate or have sex uh, recently, I, I was thinking about him, and so. Uh, well, sounds like you might we, be attracted. To yeah, we can't answer what he is. I mean, he can, only he can answer that. We can. You, know, you certainly have an attraction. You smoke a lot of pot too. Danny. Huh? You smoke a lot of pot? No. What? What? Did you hear that laugh? No, I didn't get the yeah, I didn't get okay. the pot laugh. Can okay. you do a little laugh for us, Danny? <laughs> that sounds like a pot laugh. <laughs> a little pot laugh, I think. You smoke some pot? Um, no. Oh, he's he's just not coming clean. Enough. I had yeah. some cigarettes earlier. Is the adverb totally used a lot? <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's. So what do you? Dude. We don't know about him. He's clearly. Basically, I want to know if I should confront him about the situation well, and let him gonna know confront? that. What are you going to confront? I think you got to get clear in your own feelings. Yeah. Do you yeah, want to? Yeah, you're turning yourself in here. If you, if you say, hey, what was going on the other night, you're basically letting on that you're opening yourself up to a possible another encounter. Are you ready for that? But of course. Oh, oh you, but you, of course. Uh, are you ready for a possible rejection? Um, certainly, why not? No, I think the guy's into Danny. And you, I, you I, do? Danny's, yeah. But, yeah. He's, but he uh. said that the guy came back to him at that party afterwards yeah. and uh, said, oh, I thought you were somebody else. How old is the guy? Uh, probably in his 20s. Probably in the story. I have no clue. Okay. I thought he was, I thought you were friendlier with him. Uh, <laughs> I no? wish. Okay. Well, why don't you give it a shot? Yeah. I mean, why not? I All mean, right. what's the guy going to do? He gave you a lap dance. I mean, how, <laughs> how, how was, offended is he going to be? Was he aroused be? in the lap dance? Huh? Was he aroused in the lap dance? I have no clue. How are you in that? Uh, how's your <laughs> I mean, I guess it would be the question. <laughs> Yeah, he, he, he gets him out of the park. All right. John, very excited with the next call. We got from Amherst, Massachusetts. We're, oh, John. that's where uh, 
That's where you left uh, your your youth, my right. soul, and soul. What, what happened in there? I went to college there. Oh, okay. John. Yeah. What's going on? How you doing? All right. My girlfriend has an anal fetish, and lately in bed she's kind of gotten in the habit of slipping her fingers into my bum, and sometimes her sex toys. And I don't know. Lately she's been obsessed with doing that, and I'm just not into that kind of thing. So how can I make her realize that without ruining our relationship? All right. You're gonna have to tell. Me. Yeah, and I don't know how someone sneaks anything into your ass, but uh, so it's, I, I know with the first uh, 8 to 12 inches of something, I turned my ass right through. Right, I'll take a little break, and then we'll uh, get to John and his bum. TV and their fancy American football. Where's my TRL Super Bowl party? Where's my Christine Aguilera? TRL moves from Times Square to Atlanta for the tailgate party of the year with TRL Super Bowl 34, hosted by Carson Daly and James Vanderbeek, featuring special guest in sync. All kicking it with the NFL players in honor of the big game next Saturday at 1. Oh, I'm a genie in a bottle, baby. It's got to rub me the right way. No nightmare more real than the one you can't escape. It's happening again. There is no mystery more frightening. I know what it's like to see ghosts that don't go away. Than the one only you can solve. Who is this? From suspense master Wes Craven comes the most terrifying thriller of the year. Scream 3. Rated R. Only in theaters Friday, February 4th. I had a wake-up call. I was really overweight, unhealthy. I wanted a good life, and I needed a healthy way to get there. I lost over 50 pounds on the Slim Fast Plan. Awesome. Yeah. It's like I have a new lease on life. I'll drink a shake, you know, at least once a day. My energy level right now, on a scale from 1 to 10, it's an 11. Slim Fast. It's got your vitamins, minerals. It's got your calcium, the nutrients that you need. It's been a great ride. Slim Fast every day. Get healthy. Don't wait another day. Do it now. One-a-day joint health with glucosamine, a unique blend designed to help you maintain flexibility. It's from One-a-day. And just what you need to feel your best. Hey, girls. Come in. I'm the 1-800-COLLECT-IT VICE GUY. We're out of town. And out of cash. Call Dad. He'll wire you more. Use 1-800-COLLECT and save him a buck or two. He'll think you're responsible. Yeah, excellent. 1-800-COLLECT. Save a buck or two. Right about now, are you ready for the only hits collection that counts? It's now free. All the hits right here, right now, on one unbeatable album. Let the rhythm take you over with 18 of today's hottest superstars, all on one incredible album. Featuring the biggest names in pop music today, including the Backstreet Boys, Lady Kravitz, Enrique Iglesias, Garbage, and Smash Mouth. Get this all-star collection right now. When you order Now Free with your credit card, you'll get this limited edition Now CD holder absolutely free. Only hits collection that counts, except no substitutes. All the hits, all the music right here on one collection. Now that's what I call music, volume three. To order now three, call the number on your screen. For Sam, $17.98 for CD. Or $15.98 for cassette plus $4.95 shipping and handling to the address on your screen. Fresh delivery available. Call now. The excitement of buying a new car 
never gets old. And if you go here, finding that new car or truck will never be easier. Search your new car by year, make, model, and price. You can even research warranty, road test, and safety information. So if there's a new car on your horizon, go here. AutoMallUSA.com Get fit with the Awesome Hour Upper Body Home Workout. The new video from the creators of the best-selling Fitness Made Simple program. Work out with fitness celebrity John Bastow at home and learn the keys to sculpting a lean, muscular physique. The Awesome Hour Upper Body Home Workout provides exercises to help build your chest, back, shoulders, biceps, triceps, and even abs. Just one hour or less for each workout. Now there's no time excuse for not staying in shape. Have your credit card ready and call now to order. Brian McFadden with an MTV News Brief. Whitney Houston's bag was seized by security at Kona International Airport in Hawaii on January 11th after they found a half an ounce of marijuana in it. The singer and husband Bobby Brown refused to wait and boarded their flight to San Francisco, which took off before police arrived. Possession of a half an ounce or 15 grams of marijuana is a petty misdemeanor under Hawaiian law, which is punishable by up to 30 days in jail and a $1,000 fine. The case has been turned over to prosecutors to determine whether charges should be filed. Houston had no comment on the incident. That is news for now. Stay tuned for more at 10 of the hour, every hour, here on MTV. Hey, if you have any questions, log on to lovelawnonline.com. Please include your phone number with the area code. <laughs> yeah, you guys missed it during the break. It yeah, was great. Yeah, forget it. Yeah. Uh, These people are trained. They're trained now. Zygote is the name of uh, the CD. John uh, has got himself a harmonica. Do we want to... Uh, yeah, I brought yeah. my stuff. Finish this call and then we'll, uh, we'll right. bust out Maybe the we'll get these two to play. Oh, yeah, that is amazing. It's going to be, uh, it's gonna be great. And it's going to be like you, you put it in my ass and ran over me with a Jeep. Well, then you're keeping sound. it. That's all I got to say. <laughs> so, John, speaking right. of that, uh, so be it. remember this call? Oh, yeah. What was this? Oh, the ass, yeah. yeah. But, John, so, so you, your girlfriend uh, puts, uh, puts her fingers in her to sex toys? She tries to. But John, have you ever told her you don't like it? Um, no, like I, I Time. grab her hand and you know I like, like try to make her stop, but I've never verbally said anything to her. But have you recipro me. reciprocated in any way? Excuse me. Have you reciprocated this in any way? Um, kinda. Not, you know, I like her no. a lot, and I don't want to make too much enough. of a deal yeah. about it. You're John, when she to touches college? your butt, do no. you touch hers at the same time or right after? No, definitely no. not. Mm -hmm. So so I think that it's time that you say to her, I really don't like you touching my butt, and please stop. Yeah. It's, it's not turning you off. If you want to get out of it, it's come on. Come on. Yeah. Yeah. It's your butt, G. I will, uh, in order to thwart a girl's attempts at this, I'll just, I know it sounds a little bizarre, I'll put just a little dab of pate down there before we become intimate. And then it's like, they've, eh, the hand will, I mean, oh, it's all right. And that's just your have a pate. Just, and they won't say anything. The hand will just slip back. It'll go right under the pillow. It'll be the last they ever try. Right, Drew? <laughs> huh? Oh, pate. Mm, what happens when they run out of the house screaming? <laughs> <laughs> and dogs mysteriously follow them. That, that's right. Or me. Uh-oh. Oh. All right. Uh, let's, let's hear some of that. Uh, well, you, you guys want... Uh, here, I'll give each of you one. Hmm. Here, take that. Yeah, all right, Drew, you know. Harmonic is a lot like life and sex. Sometimes you blow, sometimes you suck. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you suck and blow at the same I'll same tell you thing? this. Uh, what's true what they say about harmonica players? <laughs> they do. They, they blow about, well. Yeah, think about what is required for a harmonica. And, you know, you need to be facile with your lips and tongue. So just play something. Be brilliant.
God, that is so good. All right, so where the hell are we? We're gonna to speak to uh, Patty. Patty? Hi. What's up? Um, right now, my husband and I, we've been having some uh, problems with, with our sex life. It happens more frequently lately. Um, for example, it takes us literally 30 to 45 minutes for him to work the head of his penis inside of me. And by then, I've already had my orgasm, and he has to pull out and masturbate because it's so tight and so sore inside. And I'm not sure if it's related to a past rape and molestation when I was around six, seven years old. I don't even really know. I think you can bet on that. I think it's a reasonable bet. Wow. But, well, I've had the therapies. I've, I've done therapy four different times. In fact, if it wasn't for my last therapist, I never would have agreed to go out with my husband. Yeah. And this was five years ago. Um, I noticed it's happening more and more frequently as my daughter gets older. She's four now, um, just turned four this month. And well, is, is there something unusual about your husband's anatomy? Uh, yeah, he is kind of on the wide side, actually. And to be quite honest, one thing that I, it took me four years to tell him is he looks a lot like the man who raped me. Oh, interesting. He was my babysitter. Wow. That's interesting. But, boy. There's a... There's a there's a lot here. There. Yeah, here's, yeah, here's the thing, is that oftentimes having children will sort of rekindle a lot of the old stuff from your own past. And some of those feelings might start sort of coming to the surface, create symptoms that are unpleasant. And you have, you've been in therapy four or five times. Try, why don't you try one therapist for five or ten years? Now, well, that, see, the kinda... part of it was I, I did see a therapist for a while. Um, the first therapist I don't remember because I guess according to my father, they automatically put you in therapy after yeah. the rape. I, I understand, but the, the, the point is that... Uh, it, but it, you think she's having that uh, vaginismus? Vaginismus, for sure. And some of that can be just sort of a reflex triggered from all the, the previous trauma. It may and not be an emotionally he, mediated age. event necessarily, right. but she is saying that as her child gets older, gets more towards the age that she was when she was raped, right, right. these things are starting to happen more frequently. I think it's time to get back in and work on these things. She's pretty astute. She seems to sort of... Well, she's had a lot of treatment. Yeah. She's but it's it. still, it's so uh, sad, but true, there's such a difference between intellectually knowing something right. and being and actually fixed feeling and being it. healed yes. and being Absolutely. able to act That's on a, it. It's a pain in the ass about therapy. Different, well, I know. Yeah. different part of the brain. Different brain function. Yeah. So, we have to go. We do? Yes. All right. Yes. Uh, well, John Popper, everybody. It's too short. Thank you. Thank you. you got it. Yeah. Zygote's the name of the CD. There'll be a harmonica playing on it like this. Yes, and Catherine McCord, who's done a wonderful job. Go. There you go. And until next time, this is Adam Carolla for Dr. Drew saying mahalo. America Online new version 5.0. Now it's easier to stay in touch and even easier to get started. AOL new version 5.0. Sign up today. View the millennium with Panasonic's forehead VHS Hi-Fi Stereo VCR with commercial advanced and multi-brand universal illuminated remote. It's Y2K compliant from Panasonic, just slightly ahead of our time. Enjoy powerful movie theater sound at home with Technic's home theater receiver with built-in Dolby digital decoder delivering 100 watts per channel from Technic's The Science of Sound.